This video is not for kids. Viewer discretion is advised. Like, I'm not even trying to be funny, but these kids are... I'm gonna just say this. I teach seventh grade, they are still performing on the fourth grade level. Word on the street is, the kids can't read. And a lot of people are trying to figure out who to blame. I personally blame George Bush. To be honest, you can really blame most things on George Bush. Illiteracy, poverty, the reason why boba prices keep going up. Look at this. These prices are getting outrageous. But in all honesty, I have no idea why this is the case. Maybe it's because of the panoramic, the chemicals in the paint, or maybe it really is George Bush. I really don't know. But what I do know, when I was a kid, I loved to read. A little unknown fact about me is that I was in ESL when I was a kid. For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, I'll tell you. Basically, ESL stands for English Second Language, and it is meant for kids who speak English as a second language and have trouble reading, writing, or speaking English. The funny thing about me being in this program is that I had none of these problems whatsoever. The only reason I was in ESL to begin with was that my parents checked the box saying I speak a second language at home. Which I do. But that was enough reason for me to be put in the program. Even though I was a better reader than half the people in my class. But ESL was cool though. My teacher was this lady with one arm. She was nice. I forgot her name though. Let's call her Captain Yamamoto. I remember all the Latin kids were confused on how this little Negrito was in their class. But they taught me some Spanish and I taught them how to play Yu-Gi-Oh. I know it's crazy. A black kid teaching Mexican kids how to play a Japanese card game. Only in America, folks. This is America. I really enjoyed my time in ESL. After every meeting, we got to have as many cookies as we wanted. I was living the life until one day into the first week of first grade where I was called to Captain Yamamoto's office. You see, I used to check out hella books from the school's library. And they checked the logs and they saw how many books I was checking out. They asked me, was I reading these books? I was scared because at the time, my cousin was telling me about slavery and how it used to be illegal for black people to learn how to read. I thought they were gonna put me in jail for reading. But I said yes because I was more scared of what would happen to me if I lied. And they cheered. They said this means I don't have to be in ESL anymore. You would think I would be happy, but I was devastated. What about my free cookies? What about my friends? Juan still has my blue eyes white dragon. I need to get it back because it wasn't mine. It was my cousin's. He said if I don't get it back, I would have to work in the fields to pay him back. I say all of this because I was recently at Barnes and Nobles, you know, on my scholarship, trying to find real pieces of literature to challenge my mental fortitude. I'm lying. I was in the manga section. While I was in there, I remember seeing all these TikToks saying the kids can't read. And I realized, I got a godson who's a child. Maybe I should get him a book for Christmas. So I was strolling down the children's book section and I realized they don't make children's books the way they used to. And then I started reading them in the store. And I realized why they don't make children's books the way they used to. Because children's books back in the day, they were a little unhinged. And let me tell you how. But before we start, please like, comment, and subscribe because the brother's trying to make it out of the trenches and afford boba. But don't forget, and let's get back into the video. First, we got If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. I loved this book when I was a kid, but I realized that this book was very haram. Let's start with the title. Why are we promoting the feeding of wild animals to our children? Do I have to remind you? Of the Harambe incident of May 28th, 2016. Rest in peace to the goat though. Also, cookies are worse than crack. Don't fact check me on that though. I got that from Gwyneth Paltrow. And would Gwyneth Paltrow ever lie to us? If that wasn't enough, this kid is an absolute pushover. And can't say no to a filthy mouse. Damn bro, have some backbone. Are you sick in the mind? Are you that mentally enslaved and intellectually subservient? You know what kids do to mice where I come from? Shoot them with sawed off shotguns. He lets this disease infested satanic spawn of ham use his bathroom so he could give himself a haircut. What if he had fleas? 
Then what? You let a new outbreak of bubonic plague run rampant for what? Because you gave a mouse a cookie? Absolute menace to society. And the cherry on top, after all the mouse put him through, he gives him another cookie, starting the cycle all over again. This be the reason why we can't have nice things in our society. This book is teaching our children the wrong values. Next, we got Charlotte's Web. Another classic and another one of my favorites. This was the book that made me realize to never judge a book by its cover. Because if you never read this book before, who would you think is Charlotte? Maybe this little girl. No. Wait, maybe it's the pig. No. The duck? The sheep? You would be surely mistaken. It's this tiny ass spider who isn't even the main character of the story. From the jump, we learn that this pig named Wilbur is going to get slaughtered because he's the runt of the litter. Damn! That's how you're going to start off a children's book? I mean, I saw my grandma kill my pet goat when I was five, but that's besides the point. Rest in peace to Pikachu. I think about you every night and day. Later on, Wilbur meets this spider named Charlotte. Charlotte and Wilbur become friends, and Charlotte explains that she is a writer of words in her web. She promises to help Wilbur avoid being slaughtered by coming up with a plan. At the county fair, Charlotte creates a web that attracts attention. Wilbur is the one who takes credit and wins a special prize, and the family that was going to slaughter him two minutes ago are proud of their pig. Okay? Side note, why did these people believe that a pig can spin webs? When the more obvious answer is that it was done by a spider, but it's a children's book, so minus two points for suspension of disbelief. After all of that, we find out that Charlotte is pregnant. And my only question is, Charlotte, you be fucking? You pick up your palette knife and then work that into me. Give your meat a good old rub. That's it. Nice and hot. Hot and spicy meat. <laughs> yeah, boy. That's it. That lovely? <laughs> Charlotte also says she's going to die when she gives birth. But her children will return to the farm with Wilbur as he agrees to look after them. So, what's the moral of Charlotte's Web? I don't know. Stop eating swine. It's bad for you. Attention to watchers of this video. Smiling Observer is calling upon you to like, comment, and subscribe. Please. It's free, and he has to get out of the trenches soon. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe already. Uh, if he's not suffering from chronic procrastination or his boba addiction, uh, then he's making amazing videos. Uh, Smiling Observer will be back. Moving on, I want to talk about Diary of a Wimpy Kid. You best believe when the Scholastic Book Fair came around, I was the first one in line to get these books. Even though I only bought these because the cool kids read Diary of a Wimpy Kid. But never mind that. I'm not gonna lie, I should have put this man Greg in my Masters of Instigation video. You should check it out. But this man Greg is a menace to suburbia. Where do I start with this sociopath? How about how he consistently manipulates relationships for personal gain? I have no idea why Rowley is still friends with this man after all the times he's caused him physical and emotional harm. My brother and Kami, I need you to respect yourself enough to realize that this man is your biggest up. Me personally, I wouldn't take this level of disrespect. But to be fair, the entire family is dysfunctional. Like Roderick, there was this one time where Roderick traps Greg in the basement and host a party, creating a mess that he inevitably needs to clean before his parents return. As expected, he coerces Greg into assisting him with the cleanup. Eventually, Roderick wrongfully accuses Greg of an incident and reveals a humiliating secret to everyone in their social circle. He's the worst brother ever, and don't get me started on the parents. They're blind to everything that goes on in their children's lives. And Manny, let's just say, if you say Manny's name three times, Bad things will happen to you. Manny! <laughs> Up next, we got There Was an Old Lady Who Swallowed a Fly. The book's title is self-explanatory. It follows the exploits of this old lady who's a certified eater and swallows everything in her path after she swallows a fly. You would think that she would just go to the doctor, but you would be dead wrong. She basically starts a whole ecological disaster in her stomach that would put Australia to shame. She swallowed a spider to catch the fly. She swallowed a bird to catch the spider. 
She swallowed the cat to catch the bird. She swallowed the dog to catch the cat. She swallowed the goat to catch the dog. She swallowed the cow to catch the goat. She swallowed the horse to catch the cow. And then she died? What in the name of Kirby did I just read? First, why did no one try to stop this woman? She was running through town causing absolute chaos. Also, whose animals are those? Did she just kidnap and eat other people's animals? If so, she probably deserves to die. No cap. And finally, this is not how the food chain works. Last time I checked, horses are not apex predators. If anything, the cat might eat the dog before anything else. Look at those things. They're like demons from another dimension. Is this what we want to be teaching the children? That cows can eat goats? Or that you could just eat your problems away? Shameful! Lastly, we got the Goosebumps series. I think these books were used as a gateway drug to later get kids addicted to horror movies and horror novels. That's my conspiracy theory. I swear, if these were your favorite books growing up as a kid, you're probably someone who keeps talking about how you love the new Cardi and how he's your lord and savior or something. But growing up, I thought the television show was one of the scariest things ever. And as a grown ass man, they still are. Mostly because the episodes produced pure nightmare fuel. The book series wasn't any better. I was terrified turning the pages of these books because for some weird reason, my fourth grade teacher would turn off the lights during silent reading and would give us a mini flashlight to help us read in the dark. <laughs> she was a weird lady. I think it's because she was from New York. It didn't help that it was during the rainy season and the roof would leak from time to time. And I already had an overactive imagination so whatever was on the page was 10 times more real to me. I remember reading The Werewolf of Fever Swamp, and I clearly remember screaming to the top of my lungs in class. I remember this because I got in trouble for disrupting the class during reading time, which I thought was completely ludicrous since I was reading a horror novel in a cold, rainy, dark classroom. Some might say I was overreacting, but I'll let you guys decide. Turn off all your lights, or just close your eyes and listen to me read some of it for you. In one chilling moment, Grady, the main character, ventures deep into the mysterious fever swamp at night, guided only by the eerie glow of the moon. As he navigates the dense vegetation and he hears unsettling howls, a sense of dread intensifies. The atmosphere becomes increasingly suspenseful as Grady senses an unseen presence lurking in the shadows, and the swamp itself seems to come alive with eerie sounds. As Grady gets deeper and deeper into the swamp, the noises get louder and louder until they stop suddenly, and then Grady sees it. The werewolf! <laughs> that's not exactly how the scene went, but that's how it went in my nine-year-old brain. So do you still think I was overreacting? All in all, what's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is, please read to these kids. Remember, they're the future, and we can't survive in a world with a bunch of illiterate ass, iPad addicted mouth breathers. But tell me what you guys thought of the video. Did you hate it? Did you love it? Tell me in the comment section below. Also, a big thank you to every new subscriber. You guys are the best. We are two for two in engagement from the last two videos. I got something in the works to show my gratitude to all of you. This isn't possible without viewers like you. So thank you. And I hope you guys know how much I appreciate y'all. Like always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell, and I'll see you in the next video.